not thrive at Oxford. I ended up thriving academically, but socially I really fell apart at Oxford. And I think that, and you know, I'm somebody from a privileged background. I went to a private school. You know, it's not that um, I'm somebody who's fundamentally uncomfortable with the kind of structures of the British establishment. And that's another issue because, you know, there's a whole class dimension at Oxford. If you're not used to that atmosphere, it's like it's doubly intimidating and, and, and doubly hostile. But even for me, who from a class perspective should have felt like that was a place I could navigate, I felt just so ill at ease there. And it did feel like a hostile place to, not just to be a black person, and this is something I think is important, that it's not just a question of kind of being tolerated. And we use this word tolerance, and I have a real issue with it, because I think if you think about the messaging of the word tolerance, what's it saying? It's saying, you know, you're a problem, but we're gonna tolerate you. Um, and it felt like that. Black people are allowed into Oxford, they're tolerated, but it's not a place where you can have a positive expression of your identity, and that be celebrated. And so, you know, I made friends with other black students, we found each other, and it was a very much a kind of covert act of kind of meeting in quiet corners and whispering about why am I going into Rhodes House to study African politics? Something's not right about this. <laughs> uh, and that's something I actually take heart from this generation. Because when, for example, for my book, I went and interviewed a number of um, female students of color uh, at my college. And they, the experiences they were relaying were exactly the same experiences I had. And they found that very disheartening that they were still going through the same things 15 years later. But I found it quite empowering because they had a vocabulary that we didn't have. They were talking about POCs and imposter syndrome and microaggressions and othering. And I was like, if I'd have had these words, it would have really helped me. And then not only do they have the words, but they've kind of created movements. They've got roads must fall. You know, they're hashtagging this stuff. They're holding global press conferences. And I think that there is a confidence that we didn't have. We kind of kept our heads down and hoped no one noticed that the four black people were kind of huddled together in a corner somewhere. And now they're out and then they are agitating and they're disrupting. So that to me is a good direction of travel. And also because they're out, they are attracting allies, you know. And, and I would never have felt comfortable talking about these things with my white friends at university. And I think it was the, this idea, which I think is very ingrained in this country, that as a black person who's a visible minority, you need to seek white approval. You need to make yourself palatable to the majority. It's this idea of gratitude, you know. It is, the reason I write about gratitude is because it's internalized. I think we internalize this idea that we mustn't make trouble, we need to just keep our heads down and kind of move along because we're tolerated, because we are here on the condition that we're good immigrants, even if we're not immigrants. And um, that is very strong. And I think that this generation are, have much less tolerance towards that. They are saying, we're here, we have a right to be here. We're British, and this is what we see. And actually, when you say that, you find that you have allies that you may not have expected. So, so that is progress to me. But of course, the issues are still the same. And I mean, the, the reaction that Oxford University had to Rhodes Must Fall was so telling for me. When students presented the issue of Rhodes to the Vice Chancellor, he said, if you don't like it here, you can study somewhere else. That one statement encapsulates the entire problem with the British establishment.